Hey right, guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. And uh, today we got a 2002 Jeep Liberty. It is four wheel drive with the uh, big old 37 V6. We are actually replacing the radiator in it. It is currently, as you can tell, leaking on the concrete. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get right into this, get this thing fixed up and shipped. I um, already picked up a radiator, got coolant. I got to do an oil change as well. So uh, let's go ahead and get right into it, get the tools ready. All right, so the first thing you want to do is all this front accessories have got to come off. You have one, two, three, four bolts. They are T15 Torx head bolts. Pull it straight out towards you. Lift up, comes right out. Lay that to the side. All right, so then we got uh, one, two, three, and you got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All the top ones are 10 millimeter. These might be as well. All right. All right, so it should come right out now. The two bolts that are in the middle right here, they have nuts on the other side, so you gotta make sure you catch those when you take those out. A little bit of a hassle to get that out, but I got it. Uh, the overflow has a stud that sticks up through the uh, radiator support. Alright, so next, before I start doing anything else, I'm actually going to go on the bottom side, go ahead and start draining this thing so I can take the top hoses off and everything else in the cooling fan. Alright, so down here, Peacock, just turn it. Uh, counterclockwise look at that perfect aim <laughs> and we got two hoses over here That's great. Broke right in my hand. Vehicle definitely smells like it's been sitting a while. Alright, so there's uh you gotta take the fan out, which is this piece. There is two of these guys. Use a swivel, 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench to get them out. All right, so there's one right here, and one right there. Takes it out, and then it just kind of is floppy. And the next thing we got to do, somebody's already zip tied this. So I want to cut this in order to unplug it. Don't know why, but uh, we're gonna cut the zip tie, unplug it. And then once we do that, the whole uh, radiator fan pulls right up. Zip tie.
Okay, so it appears that the uh, transmission cooler lines on the, this side down have been zip tied, and that's what's keeping the radiator fan from popping back out. Let's see it right there. I definitely didn't do that. I definitely got to unplug the. I mean, unplug. You got to unscrew the. Uh, take these lines out anyway. I believe it's five eighths. Is the size. Uh, I got to use a line wrench to get that out, so you don't want to strip them. All right. So cut the lines, the uh, zip ties to those lines that were holding it. Uh, top rear hose is off. Now, should. There we go. Come right out. You see the bottom has these uh, little slots that lock into the radiator. Definitely, the vehicle's been sitting, I can tell. The uh, spider webs and stuff, it's all over the place. But anyway, uh, it is 5 8 It takes these cooler lines off. And you're told like this, so you don't strip the lines. See, it locks in. It locks it right loose. I gotta get the bottom hose off, get another drain pan, catch that fluid. Alright, so pop the bottom hose off. Well, I tell you, this stuff stinks. It is burning the crap out of my nose. It smells like a uh, fingernail polish remover, something like that. It's the only way I can describe it. And it really does reek. Never smelt coolant that smelt like that before. And most of the time, when you pull these out, yep. It'll leak tranny fluid, so make sure you catch that. You can see it pulling in the pan now. Not a big deal. I'll check the fluid and all that stuff whenever I, uh, wow. Whenever I, uh, got to put the new ready in and, uh, fire it up and get it up to temperature and all that stuff. It's a lot of transmission fluid, but that's actually from the radiator, not from the, uh, lines itself. Good thing I had the pan there. So I'll go ahead and, uh, there is a couple more bolts and stuff to remove to get this radiator out. Before I get too far ahead, I want to go ahead and open this box, make sure the radiator's, you know, not broken, all that good stuff. Alright, looks like everything is here. It does have uh, transmission plugs, so I'm going to take those out and pop them in the old one. So when I take it out, there's not fluid going everywhere. I actually do have some plugs that go on the uh, bottom for the radiator hose, as well as the top one, so no fluid comes out of those either. So everything seems to be here, so go ahead and finish everything else. All right, so the uh, radiator's over there. Uh, chucked that sucker. That was a pain in the butt to get out. Um, but the thing was, there is two more 10 millimeter bolts you got to remove. Actually, about four, but this one's only had three holding it in. Uh, you have a power steering cooler. Uh, looks to be right here. Uh, this must have a towing package. Anyway, it has that. You got to remove that so you can move this rubber piece out of the way. This little rubber grommet. There's a these uh, little push pin clips. One, two, three. I left in the third one, but pop these two out. Move it to the side, and you can go straight through and get to the 10 millimeter bolt. It looks like this, straight through. And I'm going to show you exactly how it is when I put it back. I transferred the rubber uh, bushing grommets. From the old radiator into this one, they pop out, pop the new ones in. Same thing with this side. You also have a condenser that's bolted to it, one 10 millimeter. 
two of them, three, four. But this one only had one. Well, it was right there. I'm going to try to find another bolt or two to put in there so to hold it still. Nothing's vibrating around because uh, you you could crack it. And that's the main reason why they bolt them. Um, what else to transfer? Something else. The uh, rubber pieces that go on the bottom of the radiator. These little guys. Pop these off. And uh, I'll stick that on the bottom of the other one. And uh, we'll try to fit it back in. So the new one's ready to pop in. Let's see here. Not really an easy way. Oh, geez. To get this guy in here. Very, very tight. My so uh, I had to take that radiator back out. It is a hassle, man, to get the condenser moved out of the way just enough to maneuver the radiator, set it in this way, swing it around under this guy, and then pop it where it's supposed to go right here. A bolt here but the little uh, like rubber grommet doors the little flaps that cover up everything those have to be propped in the radiator itself I just spent probably 30 minutes something like that of messing with this trying to get old rubber 30 some years old uh, to actually you know set in its spot this is not made for it, you know, it's trying to junk, but you get the idea. It's, it's, uh, it's actually to the top of my finger, straight up here is where it needs to go, but I can't get it up there. This is the closest I can get it. Uh, I'm going to have to cut some of this and cut it up here so it will actually fit in, um, like it's supposed to. Uh, this fits in perfect, that fits in perfect, it's just the bottom pieces. This one was a hassle it's in there it actually fits the design you can see where somebody didn't put this back in right they had it all messed up and they've already broken it um this one is not wanting to go but i'm gonna force it like i said i'm gonna cut it a little bit so it'll release the stress so it'll go around it because the condenser has to slide in these slots and it's not going to go in with the lip of this sticking out so anyway uh, i'm gonna take a like a putty knife, not a putty knife, but a uh, box cutter. Cut that a little bit. Alright. You see right there, it's in. That part's in. Had to cut it a little bit. It fits around it. You can see where I cut this one just a tad. I just wanted to relieve the stress so it pop in all around it. So now, as you see above, the uh, condenser can actually slide into the clips that's supposed to hold it in. And then mount it here. I gotta find uh, like four bolts for it. Maybe a couple so the uh, condenser will stay still and lock in place. Now we got to put the radiator back in, put everything back in, and then I got to deal with that thing, the uh, power steering cooler, because uh, it has to go through the grom uh, grommets. So uh, yeah, let's uh, get going with it. Not gonna be easy. Not gonna be close. harder with uh, all this stuff put on but you can't really do it when it's inside the car because of the all this stuff that's in the way all right so the radio radiator is set back in there the uh, these little guys man I'm telling you they are a little bit of a hassle but it's in there it's not bolted in yet the uh, power steering cooler needs to be pulled out this way you can see the uh, where it's supposed to go right here you see all this is kind of pushed out because it wasn't pushed in like it's supposed to have been this goes here 
and then uh, move this condenser outward where you can actually see it. Ouch. But anyway, that little guy right there, clip, is supposed to lock into this, and then the bolt's here. Same thing for the other side. Same thing for up here. And then uh, we can bolt the radiator back in after that. Two long bolts go to the uh, little uh, power steering cooler if you've got one. Here is the uh, one of the four bolts I'm missing. I only got one. I'm going to try to go find three more. But. Something's binding inside. Alright, so actually it was just the drill. I actually had it set it on the set, lowest setting so it wouldn't strip anything. And uh, that's the only thing that was holding it back. So you got one. You pull this cover back. You can actually see the... Uh, this is one of the long ones that go to the radiator. Thread it in a few turns or so, and then get the drill, finish the rest. Same thing for over here. Tools everywhere. Kind of. This is a mess. That's why I don't like Chrysler. So I found two bolts. Uh, really and truly, you only need two. Uh, at least for this model, however. Uh, the radiator I got is factory from, uh, supposed to be from AutoZone, but uh, that bolt hole doesn't line up with that one down there, but they line up with the top ones. So that's one that we're going to use. Same thing over here. That don't line up, but it lines up up here. So that's what we're going to use. It's holding it down there, so it's really not a big issue. It doesn't bother me. It's the whole point of the clip. It actually holds it in. It's not going anywhere. It just needs these top bolts. Alright, so the radiator is not going anywhere. It's bolted in. Condenser's in. The uh, cooler's in. Now, it's down to... Uh, the uh, transmission cooler lines, I got to make sure the, um, there's supposed to be an O-ring in these. I'll look in the old one and check, but most of the time there's supposed to be a little rubber O-ring that goes inside of these so when they seal that they don't leak. If not, I'm putting Teflon tape on it and it'll help it from leaking. Um, the uh, fan shroud and the hoses and all that stuff has got to go back, so we'll go ahead and finish that up real fast. Alright, as you can tell, everything is back together, pretty much the same way he took it apart. That's why I didn't really record the rest of it, um, because it's the same thing, really, guys. So, everything is put back. we got to top it off with coolant, start it up, get it up to temperature, turn the uh, heater on, bleed the cooling system, that type of thing. And then, uh, oil change needs to be done, and when everything is else is done taken care of then we'll be back for a uh, solid test drive make sure this thing is good and no more leaks and ship it back to the customer well, guys i guess i forgot to do an outro on that video but uh, the jeep's fixed and it's shipped back to the customer doing great the uh, bottom uh, cooler line was leaking so i had to put some teflon tape around that it kept leaking uh, didn't come with an o-ring the uh, old radiator didn't come with one or had one 
Uh, I don't know why it was leaking. Maybe it's just a defect with the Chinese junk radiators, but uh, for the most part, it's done, it's fixed, and it's out of here. So uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the bottom. I'll try my best to get to them as always, and uh, give it a big thumbs up if you like the video. It helps out. And as always, like, share, subscribe, and I will catch you in the next one. Catch you later. Thanks for watching.